take the new McLaren F1, for instance. Now, it has seating for three and even some luggage space underneath here. But that doesn't matter. What does matter is that it's one of the wildest looking cars ever made, that it costs a million dollars, and that it has a 627 horsepower, 6.1 litre engine. Now, they say it's the fastest car in the world, but at the time of recording this, there's been no independent test. So, officially, the fastest car in the world is still the Jaguar XJ220. For most people, the biggest investment of their lives is in the bricks and mortar of their own home. Buying a car is a long way back in second place. But even if you lived in a house as grand as this, there is one car that can match the value of your home. The Jaguar XJ220. There's been talk recently about some buyers trying to sell their deposits for the Jaguar because the bottom's fallen out of the supercar market. So if you put down your 50,000 a few years back simply to cash in on a quick profit, you're going to be disappointed. But if you bought your XJ220 for the ultimate in driving pleasure, you just can't lose. We've all heard the expression that something feels like a million dollars. Well, this is a million dollars and it feels great. The driving position is excellent with seat, steering and pedals all in line ahead. There's plenty of luxurious leather all around you and enough instruments and controls to keep a Concord captain happy. There's plenty of headroom for anyone up to about six foot three tall, which means that only people like Jeremy Clarkson can't fit in. Shame. Now the 220 doesn't just give pleasure from the inside, it's a delight to look at even at a standstill. It really is one of the most beautiful cars ever created. And it carries forward those classic Jaguar lines from the 50s and 60s. Unfortunately, underneath the skin, there's precious little room for practical things like luggage. Under the front, it's all fans and radiators. In the middle, it's all engine and gearbox. And in the rear, no room for my golf clubs. Now the best way to understand why there is so little room is to see how the 220 is put together in the factory. The cars are assembled in Jaguar Sport's new facility in Bloxham near Banbury. The bodies, fully built and painted at Abbey Panels in Coventry, are made of aluminium honeycomb. The engines are built by Tom Walkinshaw Racing at Kidlington. With the gearbox and double wishbone rear suspension, they hang from an aluminium subframe that's offered up to the underside of the body. It's encased in a rear under tray, moulded to form Venturi tunnels designed for optimum downforce. That's where the luggage space goes. The huge rear tyres cost £890 each and there's no room for a spare. So you have to rely on a canister of mousse to get you home if you have a puncture. Manoeuvring the car, you're very aware of its 7 foot 3 inch width, but out on the road you get used to it in no time. Visibility all round is generally very good, but I didn't like the wipers and reflections intruding into the view through the windscreen. But all this is soon forgotten, once you open the throttle and the twin turbo quad cam 24 valve 3.5 litre V6 provides you with over 540 horsepower. 
Like many people, I'm disappointed that the original V12 engine has been dropped. The Jaguar found they couldn't get over 500 horsepower from it and meet the ever tighter emission controls. Besides, the V6 is lighter and more economical, even though the turbos rob it of a decent exhaust howl. The car itself is fairly heavy to drive. There's no power assistance for either the steering or the brakes. But the brakes in particular needing a lot of muscle power to slow the 220 down. The suspension is really very good indeed, soaking up the bumps on country lanes with ease. But this car is about speed, and that means getting off the public roads and on to a private test track. The XJ220 is aimed squarely at the Diablo and F40 buyer, so why not go to their home country, Italy, and use Fiat's Nardo test track to answer the simple question, how fast? I was busy at Le Mans that weekend when former Jaguar racer Martin Brundle took time off from his usual Formula 1 duties to find out. The bank circular track is 8 miles round, so there's plenty of room to build up to an impressive 212.3 miles an hour, recorded not only on the very accurate speedo, but also by engine telemetry and radar. The catalysts fitted to the production car's exhaust soak up about 60 horsepower, so the team took them off and Martin went out again. This time 217.1, equivalent to over 223 miles an hour on a flat straight road. This is a quick car. I wasn't too concerned about reaching top speeds, but a trip to a racing circuit would give some idea about the car's high speed performance. Now the main reason to go out on a racing circuit is to really be able to use this tremendous horsepower. On the road you find that there's a fair amount of lag when you suddenly demand acceleration in second gear. There's just whoa, that momentary lag. But of course when you're using the engine at high revs all the time, most of that lag is going to disappear and we can really see some high speed motoring. There's also going to be a fair amount of braking around a racetrack like Alton Park with its beautiful country-like turns and twists down to the hairpin with second gear. Gradual application of the throttle, then this acceleration in second to 90 miles an hour. Third gear takes us right through to 130 almost. And then in fourth gear, we're already up to 140 before we need to break heavily down into this tight chicane. Power. I love it. The first impressions of the handling of the car, it's actually a lot more nimble than the, the weight of the car and the size of the car. Here we're cornering at, what, 100, 110 miles an hour with beautiful poise. Even these slower, tighter corners in second gear, the car turns in well and then accelerates with just a hint of oversteer coming at the end of the corner. All in all, it's been a wonderful experience with the owner of a Jaguar XJ220, even if only for a couple of days. It really is a most beautiful car to drive. But I have to admit that it's more refined racing car than sophisticated road car, and it's only really at home when it's let loose at speed.